Hi, I'm Charles, and welcome to part 13 of the OpenSCAD video series. In this part, we're going to talk about circles, squares, how to translate them and rotate them, and how they make up the 2D subsystem of the OpenSCAD language. So let's get started. Um, first, we're going to talk about circles. And how you define a circle is just by circle. You write circle. Uh, and you use F5 to preview. Now, this is not our ideal circle. So for this part, a lot of the time we're going to be pressing F6 as opposed to F5 to preview because you get a more accurate 2D representation of your shape. So if I press F6, I have a more accurate representation. Now, it's uh, it's important to note that for the purposes, the circle is our circle substitute, it's more like a pentagon right now, is actually on the XY plane, but it appears just slightly lower. So um, a circle is similar to a cylinder, except it doesn't have height. I'd say maybe the better analog is the sphere, actually. So you can define a radius. Uh, it's 10, say. Or you can define a diameter. And you can define an FN value. And that's, uh, that's mostly it for the circle. It's a fairly simple syntax, very similar to the, um, the, the sphere. If you want an ellipse, essentially what you can do uh, probably one of the better ways to go about it is just make a circle with a diameter of one and you scale it. So what we're doing here is notice how this vector, this scale vector, uh, or s the square braces, they only have two entries. Because since it's a two-dimensional object, it has no thickness. So we can't scale in the vertical direction because nothing would happen. So uh, we only have X and Y. So if we want an ellipse with certain properties, uh, I'm not sure which one's the major and minor axis, but say we want it to be, we know it's one wide right now, and say we want it to be six wide, we just replace this with six. And we want the top one to be two wide or too tall. And that's why. So this should give us um, what we want. And we can we can test this with some cubes, just to make sure that it's correct. I'm pretty sure it's correct. But we'll just make sure so we want six in the x direction, we'll just say 0.5 in everything else, just so it's visible. Hmm. Where has my cube gone? There it is. Ah, uh, maybe they can't intersect. That's interesting. Let me translate this up a little bit. Hmm. Maybe you cannot define 3D and 2D objects in the same thing. Uh, that's actually, that's new to me. But um, if we preview it, we can preview it with F5. And as we can see, the representation is the same size. So now we can create another cube for the Y direction. And we know that that's two. And we'll go 0 0.5, 0 0.5 again. 
I forgot a semicolon. And we cannot seem to see it. But uh, we can make this transparent. I have no idea why this is not working. Oh, I made it in the same. Oh my goodness. It needs to be in the Y direction. There we go. And so we can see that they are just the right length. So that's how you create an ellipse of a certain size. Um, so now for the square. You just say square. And I know how to spell square, I promise. Um, so similar to a cube, our square has a center. It will do something similar to a cube if the center is false. So I'll show you both of those. Um, you know, maybe we'll just start with a size. Start with a size equals five. So our cube uh, center is true. Let's make it false just to show what that's like. So you can see this is uh, the 2D analog of what happens to the cube. Uh, kind of if you projected it from 3D space onto 2D space, it's uh, this uh, something similar. So um, we can define something aside from just a size. So the size corresponds to the side lengths. Uh, same with the cube. So th this side is length five and this side is length five. So we can also have square braces, but we only have two entries. So we can have two, maybe five. And we get a custom length uh, rectangle. This is a rectangle. And that's, that's the square, that's the, the rectangle. <laughs> so uh, we can rotate this as well. So when we rotate things, uh, this should be a fairly important note that generally in two dimensional space, you're only really gonna be wanna, you're probably only gonna wanna rotate around the Z axis. Because if you rotate around the other two axes, chances are you're probably not going to get what you want because since it's in this case, for these 2D objects, they only stay on the plane. So the 2D object that's created is, um, it only exists on the plane. So if we rotate in two dimensions about uh, the Z axis, we get what we might expect. Uh, I'll do dollar sign T times 360. So you can just see it rotating. Um, I'm going to add something. Don't worry too much about it. Just see if we'll get a better view. Nope. So, um, the shape is, is more or less what you'd expect when you rotate it. Uh, it stays, it stays more or less the same. We can also rotate in the negative direction and we get what we expect by rotating. Now, if we rotate, um, I'm gonna give it a consistent size. I'm gonna rotate 45 degrees about the Z axis. 
And now let's try rotating about a different axis. Let's rotate around the x-axis. So something happened there. Um, the It looks more like a diamond now. So if we increase it again, uh, go to 60, it gets even smaller. 80. And as you can clearly see what's happening is um, it's, it's rotating in 3D space. Uh, maybe if we use F5, we kind of we kind of see what's going on here. Um, it projects more or less projects a small image uh, back onto the X Y plane of this rectangular prism, and that doesn't. A lot of the time, it's not what you're going for if you're creating a 2D object. I mean, it might be, that's one way to do it. There are other ways you can use the scale operator as we did before. That might be a better way to get what you're going for. Uh, but generally rotating around the first two axes in 3D for 2D objects is not the best way to go about things, I find. Uh, you are free to do as you please. So that's more or less it. That covers translation and rotation. Um, you can use for loops with these just the same as you can with 3D objects. So uh, let's translate. Uh, you only want two in translate. Uh, same as the coordinates for the dimensions of, of a rectangle. You only want two because you only have two coordinates to translate in because we can't translate in uh in the z direction so we'll say we'll move this 10 out uh we'll change this to zero i did like the diamond orientation better so i'm going to change that back and we're going to create a for loop So now we get this interesting shape. Uh, maybe we can move it a little bit less. We get an interesting shape. And there are other things we're going to get into that you can do with um, with these shapes once you've created them in 2D space. They're not completely useless, I promise. Uh, they can be actually quite useful. Um, I think that's all I wanted to cover in this part. Uh, rotating, translating, and these are, um, there's another basic object for the 2D subsystem called a poly, a polygon, but I'm not going to get to that right now. It's going to be covered in a later video. And for now, I think that's all I'm going to cover. Okay. Well, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.